from verse 7 to 14. When you pray, do not use a lot of meaningless words as the pagans do, who think that their gods will hear them because their prayers are long. Do not be like them. Your father already knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. If you forgive others the wrong that they have done to you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive the wrongs that you have done. Doing wrong. There are a lot of things which we are supposed not to do, or which we are forbidden to do, or which we are punished for doing, because they, they say that it is wrong. What makes them wrong? What says they are wrong? And these are questions which we all, at some time or another, ought to ask ourselves and to which we must find answers because they concern fundamental choices in the way we live our lives. In everyday life, we seem to assume that in most things there is a right way and a wrong way. The right way is the way which gives the better or more efficient result. The good things in life are difficult, but once we learn, they last. The same thing applies in much the same way in dealing with people. There are certain ways of behaving towards people which experience can prove satisfactory or unsatisfactory. Wrongdoing, for the most part, usually comes from selfishness. If I think only of myself, I may well be tempted to do what I like to, and to ignore the claims of others. It is when we do wrong that forgiveness is sought. Either you forgive or you are forgiven. We now look at to be forgiven and forgiven. And there's a particular line in Matthew 6, which is verse 12, and it reads thus, forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us, unquote. This petition in the Lord's Prayer is very appropriate. This petition asks God to forgive us our sins. It is the more fitting in that we remember the richness and bounty of God's mercy. We are all the more ashamed by the memory of how little we deserve it. In this petition, forgive us connotes for every failure in duty, for failure to render to God and to man that which we ought to have rendered, for the debt to God and to man which we ought and which we have failed to pay. Pray then like this, Jesus said, forgive us our debts. Jesus requested all men to pray that prayer without distinction. He did not say that this is the prayer which sinners ought to pray. He said that this is the prayer that all men ought to pray. This then is foolproof on how sin is universal. A writer once wrote that to ask forgiveness for sin is in itself a confession of sin. A petition for pardon is in itself a full confession because he know who begs for pardon fully admits his guilt. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, says Paul. If we say that we have no sin, writes John, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is almighty will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is the debt which we owe that awakens the sense of sin. A man owes a debt to his fellow man 
He owes a debt to his fellow Christians and to his fellow citizens and to all men. A man owes a debt to God because God made us in his image. Therefore, we must love him with heart, soul, mind, and strength. Man owes a debt to Jesus Christ who purchased us at the price of his own blood. Mark 12, 30. Sir Oliver Lodge once wrote, and I quote, while a man is alive, there is not a single hour, day or night, when he is not a debtor, unquote. The very fact that we are set in the human situation has put us under a series of debts which no man can ever fully repay. A man in the nature of things is bound to stand in need of forgiveness. The very fact that man has gone his own way puts him in debt to God. Any man who honestly faces the human situation cannot be other than conscious of his debt and of his need to pray to be forgiven. Forgiveness, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive us the wrong we have done as we have forgiven those who have wronged us. The meaning and interpretation we can give to these two versions makes no great difference. In the one case, we ask God to forgive us as it is our practice to forgive other people. In the other, we ask God to forgive us as we have in fact forgiven others before we make our own prayer. This now leads us to the connection between human and divine forgiveness, which is deeply ingrained into the New Testament. The parable of the unforgiving debtor clearly lay it down that an unforgiving man can hope for no forgiveness. And we can find this in Matthew 18, verse 23 to verse 25. As a man judges others, so will he be judged himself. And in matters of mercy, he will get what he gives. And we, we, this is taken from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. It is the merciful who will receive mercy. Judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy, says the scriptures. Whom does God forgive? Him who overlooks the transgressions of others. It is therefore impossible that a merciless man should have fellowship with the divine mercy, or a loveless man fellowship with the divine love, or an unforgiving man with the God whose name is Savior. That is how my Father in heaven will treat every one of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. And may this Lenten period be a blessed period for us. Amen. <laughs>